welcome everyone to Sunday Sentiments. And of course, this is a hate crime. And if she's found guilty, then she has to face the consequences. They normally end up killing some particular kinds of people. It's a violation of human rights. That's a very a traumatic event. Um, so I just wanted to ask the panel about their own opinions on this topic. Hello everyone and welcome to Sunday Sentiments. Sunday Sentiments is a segment on our YouTube channel where a panel comes together and discusses hot topics and current events from all across the world. Please do be aware though that the views that are shared on this panel do not reflect the views of Four Rings. These are everybody's personal opinions that they've decided to share with us. Thank you so much for watching and I hope you enjoy the video. Hi everyone, um, today our topic will be about the Roe and Wade over 10. Um, so this obviously has been, you know, a wild discussion because a lot of people have different opinions about it. Um, some people are for, for um, you know, abortion and some people are against it. So um, it, it caused a lot of, you know, news and everything being spread across even the world um and you know the future of women and their rights so um basically the rowan wade um is a 1973 lawsuit that famously led to the supreme court making everything on abortion rights um jane Roe was a unmarried pregnant woman she filed a suit on behalf of herself and others to challenge the texas abortion laws um and on june 24th in 2022, obviously, the US Supreme Court released a decision to overturn by using, I think, Dobbs versus Jackson Women's Health, which did overturn the Roe and Wade um, ruling. So, yeah, I just came here because I wanted to, you know, hear other people's opinions on it. Um, and would anyone like to go mm -hmm. first? Okay, Shakira. Um, I think I kind of, I like a lot of people who are around my age and at least in my age group do think that it's the person's personal decision because there's a debate about uh, like people who are like, well, all children's lives matter. So they try to enforce their own like morals and their own views of what is a human being or whatever onto other people, forcing them to carry children, which I just think is wrong. If you want to have a child, you have a child. That doesn't mean that you get to force somebody else to like carry a child to term, especially in this situation where a lot of the um, states themselves are saying, yeah, it doesn't matter if it's a case of incest or rape, you have to carry that child to term. It doesn't matter. That child still deserves to live or whatever. Like my choices were taken away. They could have been taken away in this instance and you're going to take them like go even further and take them away again and not even permit me to at least have some kind of control over my own body you're going to force me to carry a like rapist child to term especially because there's also some states that give the rapists uh parental rights sometimes even over the mother herself that's just my opinion. what states are those shakira can we please have some receipts and not just claims please do you have some examples um i'm pretty sure it was texas some of those southern states i'm gonna have to look it up but i'll just add it to the chat in a second <laughs> so yeah um i understand your point shakira because you know we only think about the child when it's part of a woman's choice to make because afterwards, were they doing stuff for women who didn't want, who got raped and they didn't want their children, they didn't want to, you know, have them grow up with the mother hating the way they look because they remind them of their past trauma. And um, so they want to give them away. And then they go into foster care or they go into, you know, different homes and they end up with abusive people. They end up wanting to kill themselves. Like they don't care about the child after they're born. And that's really where it gets messy and just you know hypocritical because it's all kid kid we can save the child it's a fetus whatever until the baby is born and then you do nothing for the child afterwards 
and then they end up you know becoming depressed going into wrong crowds you know it's just yeah a lot of rubbish on my as my opinion anyone else would like to go Kashi? first of all i want to say that this overturning of Roe and Wade means that uh, it's not the Supreme Court who decides this matter, it's uh, states. It will be decided at state level, so states can decide if to allow abortion or not, and so on. But uh, for me, this subject was uh, is actually very touchy, and I will admit that I am not pro-abortion, and that's my personal opinion. I don't go around telling people what they should or should not do, but I'm not pro that. But um, this brings back brings me back to many years ago when I I had two mis miscarriages, and um, yeah, I went to hospital because for one of them was an ectopic uh, pregnancy, and the doctors were not so sure if it had taken or not, so I had to be go I had to go there to be checked. And then uh, after being checked, I got a DNC, that's a dilation and um, carriage, which means that they scrap your uterus of any uh, pregnancy material that was there. And the second time I got a pill to remove any leftovers of whatever had been there. And then when I was looking up this subject, I realized that the aftercare of miscarriages is the same treatment that many women who get abortions get. So many people are, are actually um, feeling that this kind of uh, overturning of this, the right of women to choose is also going to affect miscarriage care after pregnancy because uh, actually a DNC is like, or a chemical, uh, chemical to remove the after effects of that, is actually a chemical abortion. So because of this, many uh, it will be up to the individual woman to prove that this miscarriage was actually not a living fetus. And this is also lead to many caregivers not wanting to help women after care, after they've had miscarriages. So it has a big impact, not just on abortion rights, but also healthcare rights for women uh, after they've had a miscarriage. So for me, when I look at it from that standpoint, I think it's very wrong uh, to allow people to be deciding what um, women's health care should be. Uh, and uh, we know that, that there are some states that are very, very, very fundamentalist. So we can, I can assure you that these very states will prevent women who have actually had miscarriages to go and have these procedures done because they will be seen as part of an abortion and the burden of proof is on their side. So I'm against that. Yeah, it's good to have your opinion and you've shared your story as well to also give an, an insight to, it's not just, you know, people who want abortions who are going to be affected by this. It's going to be like many different types of people who have a uterus, they're going to be affected by this decision. And that's why it, I always come back to the fact that it's just to rule over the fact that women are allowed to make a decision and they don't like the decision that is being made. Even if it's not even to do with an abortion, they want to, you know, keep us locked down and you know for people who are always talking about overpopulation this that like they really want in my opinion people to be having kids which is not going to help this earth at the end of the day um and you know that whole line of you know people deciding which part of the pregnancy you should be able to terminate it's just it just gets blurry in those lines and everyone just has a lot of opinions but at the end of the day if it's affecting women outside of that it's just they're just doing it for doing its sake to be honest anyone else um imani yes uh, i also want to mention that people tend to forget that the ones who are going to suffer the most are the most uh, marginalized groups of uh, women who were uh, come from a poor economic background or there could be or it, it, there could be so many cases in that area where 
because they're marginalized, um, they'll be more desperate to get uh, abortion. And if it's illegal, it's not going to stop people from doing it. People just find other ways to do it and they'll be more unsafe. And that's what sometimes people tend to forget that even back in the day where um, abortion was more uh, illegal and more common, uh, women would still find ways to like get it. And that's how a lot of uh, women end up uh, dying and stuff because of desperation and being in a marginalized groups. So this whole abortion thing just makes things worse and much less safe even that makes a lot of sense and it actually brings up you know one of the things that I was thinking about you know women who are at risk of you know dying if they do end up giving birth to a child that is another serious thing that no one thinks about and that's how I know that it's not about the women's um body and how they feel it's more about how they feel um, and how their own ideals, instead of asking these people specifically. There's many different types of women who have loads of different types of issues when it comes to, you know, giving birth, being pregnant. Um, and like, like I said, they don't have anything to ensure that afterwards the baby will have care and stuff. If that, that's what they should be focusing on first, instead of overturning um, the bill or I don't know if it's a bill but like if they instead of overturning it how about you do all of that stuff beforehand as a prep to then do this because it's it's not making sense like you're not going to help the child if they're actually born you don't care if they go into foster care and you know grow up in the worst conditions you don't care about the woman afterwards if she's traumatized or anything it's just it's fair and it's not thought out in my opinion. Um, Shakira and then Shiko, I think. Shaki no, Shiko, sorry, and then Shakira. Um, first of all, I want to say, um, yeah, Keshi, I'm sure it wasn't easy to share your experience. And I think, I mean, first of all, my position is that um, a, a woman should make the choice for herself, I, I can't judge anyone for how they feel on this case, uh, because we have women that are, you know, trying to get kids and they can't, and then there are women who do not want to carry a child for uh, whatever reason, and and there are very many valid reasons. So really, it's not something where personally I'd like to to judge anyone's view on it, but I want to talk about the US government itself. So not about the women, but the US government. I find it so hypocritical that they're here making overturning this judgment when they don't care that kids are being killed in school through their gun laws. I've never seen such ridiculous um, what do you call it, a ridiculous decision to make like as if you care about children. Like Jamila said, it seems that they don't actually give a, they don't care about children once they're born, but they want to control and decide for women what they're going to do. So they cannot be held accountable, but women can be held accountable for decisions they make um, for whatever reason. This is what angers me. Um, just the hypocrisy of the US government. And as Imani said, we also know that black and brown women die disproportionately. Um, they have uh, prenatal deaths and even postnatal deaths uh, compared to other women. For So the government doesn't care about looking at this kind of thing, that people are dying when they're pregnant because they're not getting the right care, but they don't think that these women should be, can be anxious about having a, being pregnant and their experience and whether they'll live or die. Um, I don't know if I'm making sense. It's just, it's one of those things where I don't even know if, if 
we should be discussing it really it, it's it should it's someone's body it should be their decision what they do i uh, i like those type of views you know where you might not agree but you're not going to force your ideals onto other people and i feel like america right now is the king the leader of doing that you know putting stuff on people without even asking how they feel their opinion just i think that we should own guns even though it can get our kids in school killed because it will keep my safety it's very selfish the ideals like i personally think that you shouldn't have an abortion but you're not the one who's going to be having the abortion no one's forcing you to have an abortion just like you're forcing them to keep the child in even though they have so many reasons to why they don't want to it's not fair and they would not like it if it was flipped the other way on them not having a choice if they want to keep their child so yeah that i personally believe that if you're going to have an opinion you obviously have an opinion but it cannot be enforced onto other people because that's not what living on this planet is telling other people what to do with their bodies um shakira yeah um first just to what i mentioned before about rapists having parental rights i did very quickly look it up and back in 2019 minnesota was the only state that allowed rapists to sue for parental rights but as of this year um there's i think there's 50 states all in all right 50 i'm just going to go with 50 states 32 of them um allow the termination of parental rights for the rapist but in all the other states like i think it's 18 others they have to have like there's varying reasons they can get parental rights just because of the parent or they have to have like a criminal conviction for them to no longer have parental rights but it's varying a lot in these kinds of things uh, also to what Shiko just said about um, black and brown women being the people who are going to be affected the most. Uh, I think it's also very important to mention that black women specifically are already much more likely to die in hospital care because a lot of healthcare professionals, no matter where you are in the world, I don't know about Africa, but at least in America, um, who are more likely to not just be taken seriously. A lot of healthcare professionals thinks that, oh, you just want drugs. That's why you're saying that you're in so much pain. You're lying. You're not actually in pain. Like, even if you're famous, like Serena Williams even said that they wouldn't listen to her when she was giving birth to her child, that she was in pain. Like you're a healthcare professional. You're supposed to be listening to your patients and making your decisions based off of that, not your own bias thinking that, oh, but these people aren't in pain. So that's why they're lying. And in these situations, it's a lot more dangerous for a black woman in America to give birth because what if she something is actually physically wrong during the labor itself, and this woman passes away because the healthcare professionals don't believe her. Um, and the last thing is that since you also mentioned some like that politicians don't actually care about children, which we all know is true. They every time somebody mentions that, oh, taking the guns away, like it's bad, it's like, you know, people die, they will say, oh, but this, if somebody wants to get a gun, they're going to find a way to get a gun. But just we won't know who is getting the guns, then it'll be a lot less safe. So you can apply that not that like reasoning to guns, but not human lives, like people are going to get abortions either way, they're just going to die doing it, because you don't have an insured a safe and healthy way for them to actually get them done. Either way, some people just can't afford it. What if I have four kids, I live in a trailer and I have another kid because accidents happen. Even if you are trying to be safe, accidents can happen. I'm not gonna have that fifth kid. I'm gonna try to get rid of it. And now I'm gonna die in a back alley and now there's four orphans who are being left behind. That's a bit of an exaggeration, but it is an example of things that can actually happen. People are going to get abortions no matter what. It's the government's responsibility to make it safe and healthy for both parties involved. I agree with that point, um, Shakira. And I think you've said this before, but there's a lot of times where like a woman will be told to have an, not have an abortion, but then they will do nothing about their rapist. They will do, they won't put them away. They'll put them away for like one month. 
like and leave them to roam about and they don't have any type of you know um punishment for what they've done to make them never think about doing something like that again um so that makes a woman feel unsafe and then they're forced to have that child which could lead to mental health problems um and then the mistreatment of the child and it's like a you know tumbleweed or roller coaster something like that yeah it's cycle. it's a cycle it just ends up you know collecting a lot more trauma on the way than if it was just as simple as just the woman didn't feel like they could take care of the kid um yeah but that whole thing about black women is just another it's another topic because no one really cares about black women they think that they're tough um and they can't feel pain and when they're feeling pain they're over exaggerating or they're just making it up um and it just leads to much more death than if they just listened and like they do with everyone else and it's sad for them as well um i think it was keshi if i'm wrong someone just tell me yeah it was i had put my hand up i put my hand up i can see money maybe but what i wanted to say also is that this decision to allow states to decide for themselves when a woman should have, whether a woman should have access to an abortion or not, as I said earlier, will also affect um, care of women when they have experienced miscarriages. But besides that, it will also affect uh, people who, are, uh, who have uh, fertility treatments in order to have children yeah. because the, the states will get the um, the states will decide when do you consider that life begins and if embryos are unborn children or not at the moment of conception now we know we all know about the ivf process where eggs are fertilized in a lab or however they do it and then sometimes even viable and viable eggs or embryos can be destroyed and so on or if the whole you all know the whole system where multiple eggs are fertilized so now this will affect women who want children because if states decide that um, uh, at, uh, at the time of conception when the egg meets the sperm that that is a life begins then that means uh, this uh, healthcare or fertility experts and those who provide this kind of service to women will be afraid to do a service that will be criminalized by the state. So that means the number of people willing to provide this kind of service for um, infertile couples and women and men who cannot uh, normally or in a normal way naturally be able to produce children will be restricted. So this, this uh, decision has far reaching effects, not just on the impact on, on abortion itself, but also other reproductive health services for women and all this if you notice it's really hitting women it's hitting women so you can imagine how this will feel for a person who already is feeling that stress a stress of trying to get a baby and then knowing that whatever treatment they, they are getting could be criminalized in that state so really this is it has far-reaching effects yeah um i understand the frustrations because if you're going to make a decision, make sure all of the bases are covered. Don't just, you know, say one overall state. It feels like a one overall statement that's going to affect just women in general. Um, and there was no thought, like I said before, about how it can affect um, other treatments and all of that stuff. Um, so thank you for giving us that insight as well, Keshi. Um, and I also wanted to add one more point to the fact that um, deadbeat dads for example you know it might not be a case of rape or anything but a woman knows that they're going to be there taking care of the child and then the man who shared the process disappears and no one there's no strong um you know system that is able to get these back because there's a lot of people especially in ethnic minorities you know they have dads who just leave and they never come back and they leave a trail of women that they've done that to 
and nothing ever happens to them. And then you expect a woman to sit there and take care of this child by herself um, and expect no issues to come of it and it to be a perfect life and everything. Uh, okay, so Imani? And then she. Uh, uh, first of all, I wanted to agree with what you say that a woman has obviously so much more to lose because it's much more easily uh, easier for a man to just move away or, you know, not be a part of any of that responsibility of when a woman is pregnant. Uh, that's why women will always been cautious in, uh, when it comes to that. Um, so I agree on that. Um, I also wanted to point out that it could also be um, potentially, potentially dangerous uh, when a woman is pregnant because sadly we live in a world where uh, femicide I think it's called um, the killing of women is the rate is very high uh, in many places and uh, if a woman is pregnant and um, it's an unwanted child maybe the man doesn't want others to know about this pregnancy the woman's own life could be at risk her and the child uh, so that's also that in, in so many ways a woman's life uh, can be a, da a danger in danger and uh, in risk of losing a lot of things so so for me I agree with what Tashiko mentioned before that we all have our own opinions about what we want to do with our own bodies but again we shouldn't force it on each other. Uh, if you think a child is, it should you know give be given a chance to do that. If not, also, that should also be an option, because it it really is a responsibility that you have for your whole life. Yeah, and the whole of their lives as well. Um, thank you for also telling us and bringing that opinion because I didn't think about that as well. The fact that um, women can also be killed in the process with the child um, because of someone not wanting this child. And it will be even more, um, you know, of a risk now because in some states you won't even be able to have an abortion to safely you know, at the beginning of the term, I believe that should happen. Um, to do that, to get an abortion, instead, you're gonna have men who even have power or anything, you know, who have coerced someone to this, getting the woman killed or even the baby killed. Um, Shika? Um, yeah, my points have been covered by others. It's just, um, yeah, just that there are women who, uh, at risk uh, with pe pregnancies and as we've all said there's rapes incest and and all sorts of things uh, so we don't know people's personal decisions uh, the state should be thinking about also um, educating people rather than criminalizing them and also um, institutional racism in, in, in hospitals and, and all that uh, that can make some very anxious about going through such processes you know if they think they're actually gonna die because the the numbers speak for themselves uh, that needs to be taken seriously as well I'd also like to say that obviously this is a very sensitive topic and uh, even though one may feel very strongly um, for the right for a woman to choose um it's also good to be sensitive when we're talking about it because as i said there are people who have lost babies through miscarriages so this topic could be quite triggering for them yeah thank you for giving us also the trigger warning because it is like a very um in-depth topic it can give you know some people like flashbacks or their past trauma um, and I do think that these type of decisions they're not easy to make either way um, and it at, in, at the end of the day it should be individual choice um, and not 
made by um, a majority of men in the Supreme Court. Yeah. Thank you everyone for joining um, and we will see you on the next topic. Bye. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed the video. Please like, subscribe, and press that little notification bell to know when we next post any of our videos. We truly do appreciate the support. Thank you so much, and we'll see you next time.